to God. We are talking about the Holy Spirit and fire. Today you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You must be baptized in the Spirit of, with the Spirit of God. Baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many people here are not yet filled with the Holy Spirit? Can you show me by raising your hand? If you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, come on, don't be embarrassed, man. If you want to be filled, 50% of you here are not filled with the Holy Spirit. So if you, are not, if you don't speak in tongues, that's what I'm talking about. Can you lift your hand? We can do a Dr. Yuna exercise. I'm not asking you to lift your hand to embarrass you. Amen. But 50%, there's a massive number of people who are not filled with the Holy Spirit here. But God bless you for your honesty. You know what Dr. Yuna used to say? She used to say, speak to your neighbor in tongues. Can I do a Dr. Yuna exercise? Okay, can you speak to your neighbor in tongues? Look at your neighbor and pray in tongues. Come on, look at your neighbor, elders, deacons, everybody. Look at your neighbor and, and pray in tongues. You hear the laughter. It's people who are not filled with the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to ask you again. How many people want to be filled with the Holy Spirit today? Where's the genuine fear of the Lord? Okay, so you're going to be filled by the Holy Spirit. So, but there's, a more, there's more numbers. It's just, you know, it's up to you. We don't force the things of God. So, what is the baptism in the Holy Spirit? The baptism in the Holy Spirit is both a term and an experience. So, it's something that you experience. It's not just something you read in the Bible. The believer is baptized, immersed, dipped, plunged, enveloped, submerged with the Holy Spirit. So, when I got filled, I didn't receive little Holy Spirit. I, I, received, I received the real Holy Spirit. The Bible says, uh, you know, uh, God will pour out his spirit without measure. So when you are filled today, I want you to believe God that you will be filled by the Holy Spirit without measure. Glory be to God. You will receive bucket loads and truck loads. Come on, somebody. And swimming pools of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in Matthew 3.11, I indeed baptize you with water and repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. You have to realize that the Holy Spirit is a member of the Godhead. I'm, I'm working this morning. I'm not here to entertain anybody. I'm working. There's preaching. There is working. So I'm working this morning, uh, preaching, uh, teaching the doctrine, the principles of Christ. So the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead. In the book of Genesis, when, um, when God said, let us make men, if you look at that word, it's the word Elohim, which is the plural name of God, which means God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is God. He's not an impersonal force. He's not electricity. Though when he comes on you, you feel like electricity has come on you. The Holy Spirit is God, and we address him as he, the Holy Spirit. The Holy, we don't say it, the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is, is, is a person. He's spirit being, but he's a person. Because the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. You can't grieve. Come on, somebody, an impersonal thing. Come on, somebody. And the Bible says, quench not the Holy Spirit. You can't quench an impersonal thing. Come on, somebody. And in the book of Acts, it's full of the Holy Spirit said. The Holy Spirit said. The Holy Spirit said. He can't say if it's just a thing. Glory be to God. But he is God. He was there, uh, you know, even... Uh, before creation, the Holy Spirit was there. And the Bible says the earth was without form and what? And void. And the Spirit of God hovered what? Upon the faces of the earth. Why was he hovering? He was waiting for God to begin to speak the word and say, let they be. 
And when God spoke, it was the Holy Spirit who was bringing it into uh, reality. And the Spirit is hovering over your life and is waiting for you to speak the word of God so that he can bring it to pass. Are you getting the teaching? So the Holy Spirit is God. Some of you have to remove. Some of you come from uh, traditional churches where they don't emphasize the Holy Spirit. So you have to remove that, that mentality. You have to unlearn. Come on somebody. How, what, how they suppress the Holy Spirit in their teaching. Glory be to God. The Holy Spirit is so imperative, so crucial, that even Jesus could not start his ministry without the Holy Spirit. He began preaching after he was baptized by John. And then the Bible says the Spirit of God came on him, come on somebody like a dove. So, in the form of a dove. So, child of God, if Jesus needed the Holy Spirit, how much more you? If Jesus, who was 100% God, 100% man, needed the Holy Spirit, how much more do you need the Holy Spirit? Even Jesus said to the disciples, don't do anything until you are endured with power from on high. Don't do anything. Don't even preach. Don't even testify. Don't even sing worship. Don't even usher. Don't even host until you are filled with the power from on high. Because the kingdom of God is not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the Lord. When the spirit of God comes on you, then you can be able to manifest the kingdom of God in this world. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Luke eleven thirteen. if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? So the Holy Spirit is a free gift. You just have to ask to say, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is holy. So you have to get all the, the dirt out of your life. That's why some of you, you get filled. Every prayer convention, we fill you with the Holy Spirit. But the next prayer convention, you don't have. Because there is still sin. If you want the things of God, you create room in your life. You create room in your spirit. Then you can have more of God. I remember I used to come to church, drink beer, come to church, smoke, come to church. But what happened? And, and each time they would say, come and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'll never get filled. Come and be filled. But it's when I rededicated my life to Jesus. That when they said, come and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, God came on me. I was, I was jumping to the ceiling. I, I can't explain. Imagine God coming on you. Imagine God sitting on you. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Ah, uh, Come on, this, this material body cannot handle. Glory be to God. That's why our father says I don't fast like I used to do because at my age, the, the, my body cannot handle the anointing, too much anointing. Glory be to God. So you have to realize that when God comes on you, all that cuteness will go. All that I'm pretty, I'm wonderful, uh, I'm, Misty, I'm Misty World, I'm Misty Universe. All that stuff will go away. Because the Bible says, do not be drunk with wine, but be you filled with the Holy Spirit. The devil gave alcohol because the devil is a counterfeiter. He was just trying to counterfeit the power of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't have anything original. He's just a counterfeiter. So what you are looking for is not in alcohol. What you are looking for is in the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says, do not be drunk with wine, but be you filled with the Holy Spirit. So how does the baptism in the Holy Spirit help the believer? The baptism in the Holy Spirit gives the believer power to be a witness. You will not be afraid to preach anymore. You will not be afraid to stand before people and testify. The reason why you are timid, the reason why you are cowardly when it comes to serving God is because the Holy Spirit has not touched you. When the Holy Spirit has touched you, the spirit of boldness will come before you. That's why the Bible says when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they said these men are uneducated, but they've been with Jesus. They've been with Jesus. Glory be to God. The baptism in the Holy Spirit gives the believer power in prayer. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should ought to pray, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be altered. The Holy Spirit helps us in prayer. The Holy Spirit 
strengthens us in prayer. The Holy Spirit leads us in prayer, guides us in prayer, speaks to us in prayer. When you don't have the Holy Spirit, you struggle to pray. You can't pray for more than five minutes. Sometimes I can't blame people when they can't pray. They don't have the Holy Spirit. Before I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I couldn't pray for ten minutes. But when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I can pray for days. Come on, somebody. I can pray for hours. So the Holy Spirit helps, uh, gives the believer power in prayer. When you have the Holy Spirit, you can tarry in prayer. When you have the Holy Spirit, you don't pray like a hundred meter sprint. You can pray like a marathon. The baptism in the Holy Spirit enables the believer to be a true worshiper. Bible says in John 4, 23, 24, uh, But the hour cometh, and now is, that they that worship the Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can't just worship God in the flesh. Come on, somebody. That's why we praise God when we go high in praise. Then we can go deeper in worship because then the spirit of worship comes and ushers us into the glory of God and into the presence of God. Paul says, I sing with my understanding and I sing in the spirit. He's saying, I sing in tongues. Come on, somebody. Glory be to God. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you can worship for hours. Come on, somebody. And you don't get tired. That's why our father said, when you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are like someone who's eating bread without butter and jam. You are like someone eating bread without burvos. Eating bread without sausage and egg. It's good you are eating. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but there's another level of eating. It's good you are praying, but there's another level of prayer. It's good you are worshiping, but there's another level of worshiping. Bible says in spirit, we worship in spirit. Glory be to God. Not just worship in, uh, uh, in William McDowell or just worship in Fungisai or worship in Mahendere. Come on somebody. Come on somebody. The Bible says singing hymns, psalms, spiritual songs, making melody in your heart unto the Lord. It's good they have a song, but where is your song? Where is your psalm? Where is your hymn? Where is your spiritual song? It's only possible when you, were, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Bible says, for we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit. Philippians 3.3. 3. The baptism in the Holy Spirit give, gives the believer understanding of scripture. The Bible talks about that when, the Holy, when him, the spirit of truth will come. The Holy Spirit is also called the spirit of truth. Bible says when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. The Bible is a spiritual book. It's not carnal. It's not a newspaper. It's not a novel. The Bible. So you can't understand it carnally. So you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that he can help you understand. And not only does he give you understanding of the scripture, he also guides you into truth so that you are not deceived by so many doctrines that are out there. Come on, somebody. The Holy Spirit will guide you into truth. The Holy Spirit will guide you into the right teaching and you will not be deceived. Shake your neighbor and say, neighbor, if I were you, I wouldn't sleep. Even Jesus had to have the Holy Spirit. What about us mere men? Come on, somebody. Glory be to God. Bible says, when the spirit of truth has come, Amen. He's the spirit of truth. He's the comforter. I've seen some people who never stop grieving because they don't have the comforter. Who's the Holy Spirit? So There's nothing wrong with grieving, but there's something wrong with the spirit of grieving. Spirit of grieving opens up room to demons. You start dreaming of that person who died. Those are demons. It's not that person that you are dreaming. Because you, you, you have not been comforted by the Holy Spirit. It all takes the inner, come on, inner pain, inner grieving requires an inner healer. It requires an inner comforter. Only the Holy Spirit can reach places that people's words cannot reach. Only the Holy Spirit can reach areas that people's comfort cannot reach. People's comfort is limited. 
They comfort you and they go home. But when the Holy Spirit is inside of you, glory be to God, you have everlasting comfort. The baptism in the Holy Spirit enables the believer to hear God's voice and be directed and guided by him. Glory be to God. The church in the book of Acts was guided by the Holy Spirit. Acts 13.2, as the minister to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Separate me, Barnabas, and so for the work are, are, whereunto I have called them. Some of the mistakes we make is because we are not guided. How many guys have you dated now? How many girls have you dated? You just say, she's not the one. Because you, you are using your medulla blancata. After I rededicated my life to the Lord, I never dated, dated, dated. Lord said, the Holy Spirit said, you get married at 25. So when 25 came, uh, I was praying. I had a couple of people on my list. Then the Holy Spirit said, Joylene is your wife. Glory be to God. He said, he said it's Joylene. Amen. Some of them could sing. And some of them could, could preach. But the Holy Spirit said, no, your wife is Joylene. I, I didn't have time to date. I was busy dating Jesus. Glory be to God. So you know, some of the financial issues you are in, it's just a lack of being guided. That predicament you are in, your, your job predicament, is just a lack of being guided by the Holy Spirit. In Mark 13, 11, but when they shall lead you and, and deliver you up, Take no thought beforehand what you shall speak, neither do pre premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in, the hour, in that hour, that speak you, for it is not you that speaks, but the Holy Spirit. I remember when I was, we were applying for our visas to go to Australia for missionary work. Um, my, my, you know, some, some of us, are, everything we get, we fight. I don't know, maybe you, you got... You, you, maybe you have someone praying for you. But some of us, everything we have to fight. So anyway, we, we, they called me for an interview. If you apply for an Australian visa, they never call you for an interview. They never call you for an interview. Every pastor who went to Australia was never called for an interview except me. So I was going for that interview then I, I phoned Baba, he was in Malaysia. I phoned Baba, I said, Baba, uh, there, there's an awkward thing here, I've been called for an interview. He said, don't worry, my son, he spoke in tongues. And he said, it's going to go well, and good things are ahead of you. So when they called me for an interview, I wore my best suit. Come on, somebody. Don't go looking shabby. You do your part. Let the Holy, Holy Spirit is not going to dress you up. It's not here you need makeup. It doesn't matter. It might be traditional. But when you go for an interview, look for some makeup. Come on, somebody. Borrow some makeup. So, so my wife, she wore her, you know, you know how my wife, she's a slay queen, you know. She wore, she, she wore her best. She wore her best. Come on. And, and we walked in the interview. I'm talking about the Bible says you don't even need to think about what you're going to say. That's what I'm talking about. So we walked in the interview and this lady, she was the boss of the Australian embassy in, in Zimbabwe. So what she did is, uh, you know, she came, she said, oh, uh, you know, Mr. Rosere, is this your, is it your wife? And I said, this is my wife. But her reaction, when she saw us, her reaction was like, wow. Come on, somebody. Because I was dripping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> you don't want a scruffy pastor. Everyone will be scruffy in the church. So, anyway, so then, you know, so we, we said, we, the interview didn't take 30 seconds. So she said, uh, she asked me, she said, uh, you know, so you, you want to go to Australia? I said, yeah. She said, I, I, just, I just gave her one answer from the Holy Spirit. And she was like the queen of Sheba. She melted. She fainted. 
That's why you need the Holy Spirit. Always messing yourself up in the interview. Come always shooting yourself in the foot. You need to be guided by just one question. She, she was so satisfied. She didn't answer me another question. In, in, in two minutes, we are out of that place. Glory be to God. And we, and we walked out with our visas. So that's why you need the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. So that if you are questioned or you, you are in a situation and where you need to answer, come on, the Holy Spirit will guide you and he will give you something to say. The baptism in the Holy Spirit enables the believer to be used by God in the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit to the glory of God, edifying the body of Christ. So you have to realize that when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you begin to flow in the gift of the Holy Spirit. As you have seen in our church, there is no superhero in our church. Everyone can be used by God. In our church, you can prophesy. In our church, you can, you can cast out devils. You can, you, can, you can, I'm not talking about being a sidewalk prophet or a passage prophet out there. Some prophets always see death. Oh, I see someone dying in your family. Liar, liar, pants on fire. That's not prophecy. That's, that's, that's like the, you are putting fear, intimidating people so that they are afraid and they can do anything you tell them to do. Come on, somebody. But we'll never be jealous even if God uses you. Even if angels come down when you preach here. We will never be jealous because our desire is for the church of God to be used in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. To be used in the gift of healing. To be used in the gift of uh, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. To be used in the gift of uh, interpreting of tongues, diverse tongues. To be used in the gifts of, uh, of prophecy. That's our desire. But it only happens when you are filled with the Holy Spirit because he's the giver of the gifts. So when you receive the Holy Spirit, you are going to receive a gift from the Holy Spirit. The baptism in the Holy Spirit enables the believer to produce the fruits of the Holy Spirit by manifesting the personality of Jesus. Do you know why you are not changing? Do you know why you are failing to overcome those flaws and weaknesses? Do you know why you are failing to love people? It's because you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit... He produces divine nature in us. He produces the fruit of the Spirit in us. That's why Romans 5, 5 says what? The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. He is the Spirit of love. Glory be to God. That's why there was so much love in, in the book of Acts because they were under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. The Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, humility, self-control. Against such there is no law. It's the Holy Spirit who helps us to control ourselves. It's the Holy Spirit who helps us to love. Amen. To be gentle, to be kind, to be long-suffering. Glory be to God. And uh, to have self-control. So they are not just called the fruit of the Spirit for nothing. They are called the fruits of the Spirit because they are given by the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Who may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? Acts 2.39. Acts 2.39. The promise is for every believer. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord God shall call. So it's not just for the pastor. It's not just for the elders. The Bible says to as many as the Lord God shall call. What must uh, the believer do to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? The believer must believe God for his gift. He that, John seven thirty eight. he that believeth on me, as the Spirit says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of water. So you have to believe. The same way you are saved, you are saved by faith. You are healed by faith. So the things of God, you can't reason them. Come on, somebody. Reasoning is the devil's workshop. Come on, somebody. When you start reasoning, you are stepping out of the realm of faith. That's how Adam lost dominion in the garden, by reasoning. Eve reasoned. says, ah, why, why did God say you can't eat? Ah, God said if we eat, we will die. The devil said you, you can't die. They were reasoning. The promises of God are yes and amen. 
Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. If the Bible says, I'll be filled with the Holy Spirit, yes and amen. You don't have to use your brain because the things of the Spirit are not intellectually discerned, but they are spiritually discerned. Are you getting the teaching? Glory be to God. So the same way, uh, two ways to receive the Holy Spirit. You can receive the Holy Spirit by a sovereign act of God. In the book of Acts, as Paul was, was preaching, the Bible says, you know, they, they, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, 2 to 4. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire. Glory be to God. With the Holy Spirit, this is the, the day of Pentecost. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want you to say it's the Spirit that gives utterance. It's the Spirit that gives the tongues. My job is to yield my, 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 my tongue, my mouth. So that's your job. You don't have to cook tongues. You know, you start saying embarrassing things if you, if, you, if you try to cook tongues. They spoke as the Holy Spirit gave them tongues. Are you getting that? Glory be to God. So you will speak as the Holy Spirit gives you. Hallelujah. Acts 10, 44, 46. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all of them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. For they heard them speaking with tongues and magnify God. They what? Everybody said they heard them. Everybody said they heard them. So these tongues we are receiving, it's not tongues in your heart. We are going to hear you speaking. They heard them. On the day of Pentecost, they heard them. Here, Peter is at Cornelius' house, and they heard them. They heard them speaking in tongues. Come on, somebody. So we don't want what they say, the appreciation of the cat is in the heart. No, no, no. Come on, somebody. We must hear you. I said we must hear you. When a Pentecostal believer prays, we must hear you. How were they able to record the prayers of Jesus in Gethsemane? They heard him. How were they able to record the prayers of Elijah? They heard him. Glory be to God. Well, the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Burning prayer. Hot to the point of boiling. The other way you can receive the Holy Spirit is when anointed hands uh, by people who are filled with the Holy Spirit are laid on you. Acts 8, 17, then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. What is the sign given to believers who receive the, Holy, the baptism in the Holy Spirit? Believers who receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, they speak in tongues. So there's no way you can say you are baptized with the Holy Spirit when you don't speak in tongues. The fact that you don't speak in tongues is the sign that you are not baptized with the Holy Spirit. Come on, nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's not time to sleep. <laughs> Come on. When you are watching those uh, Bollywood and Nollywood movies, you are wide out. You can watch four in a row. Come on, somebody. I just caught you. You watch those Nollywood can watch five the whole night and you won't sleep. But just 20 minutes of the word, you are dozing. That's how the devil robs the word. That's how the devil steals from you. So the evidence that you, the Bible teaches us by illustration and example that speaking in tongues is a sign given to those who have received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Acts 2, 4, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Glory be to God. Acts 19, 6, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them 
and they spoke with other tongues. Now, the tongues are a supernatural language which one never learned at school or born speaking, but can only be spoken the moment you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So, you know, tongues are not debele or shona or, you know, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, is not tongues. It's a language that you are not born speaking. You never learned it. But you begin to speak the moment you are filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the sign that God has given us. That when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you begin to speak in tongues. And the Bible tells us that whoever speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to men, but he speaks to God. Paul says, I pray in understanding and I, and I pray in the spirit. Child of God, we don't just pray in our language. We don't just pray in Squi or Ga. We don't just pray in Ibo. Come on, somebody. We also pray in the Holy Spirit. We don't just pray in Pigeon. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. We also pray in the, in the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. And the Bible says, whosoever prays in tongues does not speak to men, he speaks to God. And the devil operates in the, in the, in the realm of carnality. That's why Jesus said, get, get thee behind me, Satan. You only understand the things of men, not the things of God. So when you speak in tongues, even the devil doesn't know what you are saying. He only realizes when the thing is happening and it's too late for him to intercept. The Bible says, when you pray in tongues, you are praying mysteries. And Paul says, in a mystery, we are praying the wisdom of God. Come on, somebody. When you are praying in tongues, you are praying mysteries. And in a mystery, you are praying, come on, somebody, the wisdom of God. Imagine when you are praying in tongues, you are praying in mysteries. You are praying the wisdom of God. Tongues is a, is a personal language personal for personal communication secretive communication between God and his children that's why Paul says I pray in tongues more than you all come on I remember one time Baba Guti was being driven from Harboron to, uh, to uh, from Francistown to Harboron so when he got to uh, to Harboron there was a queue of people who were waiting to see him and on that queue was the couple that drove him. You know, it's a five and a half hour trip. So the couple that drove him were also in the queue to see him. So then people asked them, they said, why are you in the queue to see Baba? You spent four and a half hours with him. They said, we couldn't talk to him because he was speaking in tongues for four hours, 30 minutes. You know why you are so full of bitterness? You don't speak in tongues. You don't pray the wisdom of God that can wash that bitterness away. Do you know why you are always said you don't pray in tongues? Come on, somebody. Do you know why you are always lustful? You don't pray in tongues. Because, you know, each time I feel all those things, when I begin to pray in tongues, come on, it cleanses my mind. Come on, it cleanses my heart. Glory be to God. Bible says when you pray in tongues, you build yourself up. Come on, somebody. Child of God, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you build yourself up. Come on, you don't have a moment to be down. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you move from glory to glory. Come on, you move from strength to strength. Come on, somebody, you move from victory to victory. If someone hurts you, you just begin to speak in tongues. When you feel depression coming on you, you just begin to speak in tongues. When you feel sadness coming on you, you just begin to speak in tongues. And you will find joy coming. Baba Guti says you want to prophesy very easy. Pray in tongues all the time. It's not just going to happen two hours of praying in church. Or 30 minutes of praying during devotion. Praying in tongues. Praying in tongues in the shower. Praying in tongues in the bedroom. Praying in tongues, uh, uh, come on somebody, in the car. Praying in tongues. I was with the elder Stolle and they were going for their, his wife's sister-in-law's funeral. And, and so I drove them to the airport. Uh, 4 a.m. in the morning. And we're going to the airport, but elder Stolle didn't have a ticket. Mama Stolle had a ticket. But elder Stolle didn't have a ticket. So as we went, 
uh, we prayed and we said, God, uh, create room for him on the plane. Because we had tried every website, every website you can think of. We had tried to get a ticket and we couldn't, we couldn't get a ticket. And many people tried here, yeah, went on the computer, they tried, they, could, they only, only managed to get my stolen ticket. And, but, so when we, when we took off from the house and, and you know, I was driving, I didn't speak to them for 40 minutes. I was just praying in tongues, praying the wisdom of God. Praying the wisdom of God. I'm not saying I'm more holy than you. Or I'm more sanctimonious. I'm just giving a testimony to the glory of God. I'm not exalting myself above the brethren. But I'm just showing you the power. Because you say, where is it? Where, 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 where has it worked for you? So I was praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. Then we go to the airport. And to the customer service desk. And the Holy Spirit said, go to number three. You don't just go. Haven't you heard Baba Guji saying that when I'm standing in a queue and, uh, uh, and, and the Holy Spirit says, go to number 10. If you go to number nine, you'll be denied a visa. If you've got a situation, you know, uh, and, 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 and you want to go and, 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 and you know, maybe uh, seek a favor or something. You, you don't just walk in there. So when we go to number three, we said, look, we have a situation. We have an emergency. He has to travel for a, for a funeral. Can he get space on this Emirates flight? Then they just went, tee, 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 said one seat left. 2,500. It was even cheaper than my stolen that they had bought on the, on the computer. It was way cheaper. Child of God, come on when you are praying in tongues. The, the, the Lord positioned an angel on counter number three. <laughs> come on somebody. And said, that is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, blessing does not mean you have too much money. Blessing means when I need a ticket, I get it. Blessing needs, means when I need help, I get it. Blessing, come on somebody. Come on somebody. Blessing means when I need a door open, it will open. Come on, blessing means when I need help from the sanctuary, help from the sanctuary will come. That's what blessing means. Blessing, when you are blessed, they will tell you, this visa takes three months, it will come out in two days. I once applied for a police clearance. They said we have a backlog three months. Child of God in five days. In five days. Come on, child of God, you don't have to wait in a queue like everybody else. God can jump you. Come on, somebody. I say, come on, somebody. Where am I speaking to? So, tongues, is, is forget your language today. God is going to give you a new language. And that is proof that you would have received the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. When you read the Bible, the Bible doesn't just say Holy Spirit alone. The Bible says Holy Spirit and fire. Holy Spirit and power. Some of us old believers, we now just have Holy Spirit. Dry tongues. Dry tongues. Come on, but the Bible says Holy Spirit and fire. Holy Spirit and power. Ah, come on somebody. A Pentecostal believer must not be dry. Come on, somebody. A Pentecostal believer, come on. The Bible says desire. Paul says desire the best gifts. Come on, this morning, desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Develop hunger. The Bible says blessed are they, are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. I don't know who I'm preaching to up in here. Come on, somebody. The Bible says in 8, 6, 8, and Stephen, full of faith and power. Come on somebody. He did great wonders and signs among the people. The Bible says in Acts 1 verse 8. And it says, uh, come on somebody and you shall receive power. And you shall receive power. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall, come on, you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You shall receive power power. And John speaks about Jesus. He says, he who's coming after me, who's mightier than me, come on somebody, his shoelaces, I'm not worthy to untie. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Not just the Holy Ghost. 
but the Holy Ghost and fire. Not just the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost and power. Child of God, you need the fire. Come on, you need the fire to burn in your spirit. You need the fire to burn in your soul. Pentecost, on the uh, Pentecost uh, is fire that came down. I said Pentecost is fire that came down. Come on, somebody. Today, we must experience Pentecost. I said today, you must ex experience Pentecost. Come on, the Bible is full of the fire of God. I said the Bible is full of the fire of God. Come on, the Bible says uh, uh, in the Old Testament, the priesthood, it said the fire must always burn on the altar. Remove the chaff. Remove the chaff so that the fire must always burn on the altar. Come on, there the physical altar. Now our altar is our hearts. Our altar is our hearts. The fire must always burn on your heart. The Bible says uh, uh, the fire in the days of Elijah came down uh, and it burnt solid stone uh, and it licked up the water. What kind of fire licks up the water? What kind of fire burnt solid stone? Uh, it's called the fire of the Holy Spirit. Uh, our God is not a dead God. Uh, our God is a God of fire. He's a God of fire. When John saw Jesus in the book of Revelations, he said there was fire. Fire. There was fire in his eyes. I don't know who I'm preaching to up in here. I said, I don't know who I'm preaching to up in here. One day I was we were casting out a demon, and the demon was being stubborn. And I said to this girl, I said, I said, look at me. And she said, I can't look at you. I can't look at you. I said, Why can't you look at me? She said, Because there is fire in your eyes. Come on somebody. The devil is not afraid of believers who go to church. The devil is not afraid of believers who carry the Bible. The devil is afraid of believers who have the fire of God. I don't know who I'm preaching to up in here. The devil is afraid of believers who walk in power. Who walk in victory. Who walk in the influence of the Holy Spirit. I refuse today to be just an ordinary believer. I must be endowed with power from on high. I must be clothed with power from on high. I must be submerged. I must be dipped. Come on somebody. I must be covered. I must be baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know who I'm preaching to. We know that fire, the characteristics of fire, fire purifies. Come on, fire purifies. It can purify silver. It can purify gold. Today when the fire of God comes down, it's going to purify you. It's going to sanctify you. It's going to remove everything in your life that is not from God. Another characteristic of fire. Fire is destructive in its nature. Fire destroys everything in its path. When the fire of God comes down, every shackle on your life is going to be broken. Every chain on your life is going to be broken. Fire is going to destroy the spirit of anger. Fire is going to destroy the spirit of poverty. Fire is going to destroy the spirit of disease and the spirit of infirmity. Fire is going to destroy the spirit of depression. Fire is going to destroy the spirit of suicide. Fire is going to destroy the spirit of moodiness. There was a fire. There was a wild fire in Australia. I saw snakes running away from the fire. I saw lizards running away from the fire. Child of God, no demon, no principality, no power can stay where there is the fire of God. No evil spirit can stand the fire of God. That's why Jesus said, behold, I've given you fire. I've given you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Another element of fire or characteristic of fire is that fire can spread and fire can leap. I've seen fire leaping across one tree on this side of the road. 
to another tree on the side of the road. I'm speaking to those believers who have been tarrying in prayer. I'm speaking to those believers who have been seeking the face of God. We want to spread the fire. We want to spread the fire. We don't want to be swallowed. We want to spread the fire. I don't know where I'm preaching to. Bible says out of your belly flows the river of living waters. Ah, come on rivers. Come on rivers, not potholes. Come on rivers, not puddles. I don't want a puddle. I want a river. I want a river. Not rivers on my ankles. Not rivers on my knees. Not rivers on my chest. Not not rivers on my shoulder, but rivers to swim in. Rivers to swim in. Rivers of Ezekiel. He said, I saw the river rising. I saw the river rising until the temple was covered. Rivers we can swim in. Swimming in the Holy Ghost. I said swimming in the Holy Ghost. I said swimming in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says always fervent in spirit. Always fervent in spirit. Always fervent in spirit always burning always burning the world is war the world waits to watch men who are burning the world waits to watch men who are burning always burning in spirit not not dry not lukewarm not complacent not dead like a tree twice dead not like dry like yesterday's toaster not like not anemic come on not anemic come on somebody but always burning her but always burning her who am I preaching to up in here I can't get no help in this church always burning in spirit always burning in spirit never lagging in zeal serving the Lord God, the Bible says he makes his angel spirits and his ministers a flaming fire come on somebody today God must make you a flaming fire come on today God must make you a flaming fire we are coming out of that spiritual dryness you are coming out of that spiritual wilderness ah, today you are going to be a flaming fire come on a flaming fire come on a flaming fire a flaming fire over your house come on a flaming fire over your life come on a flaming fire he makes his angel spirits come on somebody but his ministers a flaming fire a flaming fire. A flaming fire. Child of God, the fire of God changes how you pray. The fire of God, come on, it takes your passion to the next level. Come on, the Bible says, Jesus said, the zeal of God's house has eaten me up. That word zeal is the word zealous. It means heat. It means fire. Jesus said, the fire, the fire of God has eaten me up. Come on, stand on your feet. Holy Ghost and fire. I said, Holy Ghost and fire. I said, Holy Ghost and fire. I said, Holy Ghost and fire. Now, if you are not born again, I need you to come and give your life to Jesus so that by the time the Holy Spirit falls, come on, you can also be baptized. If you are there, you want to surrender your life to Christ, you want to be born again. Because the, the Bible says, unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. You are just standing at the door. But then after you are born again, you enter. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. You find your way around the kingdom of God. Are you there? You want to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. I'm going to ask you to lift your hand where you are. I was a sinner, but Jesus saved me. You might be a sinner, but he's ready to save you. If you are there, you want to be born again. Lift your hand where you are. Believers praying in your heart.